You said you'll make the announcement this week. Can you tell us more about that? Will it be the beginning of the week? What day? I think it'll be on Friday or Saturday. And we want to pay respect. We, uh, it looks like, it looks like uh, we will have probably services on Thursday or Friday, as I understand it. I think, you know, the respect, we should wait till the services are over mm -hmm. for Justice Ginsburg. And uh, so we're looking probably at Friday or maybe Saturday. All right. Joining us now, the second ranking Democrat in the Senate, member of the Judiciary Committee, Minority Whip, Dick Durbin of Illinois. Great to have you on. Senator, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, what's your reaction to the president's uh, statement this morning uh, that he's going to be announcing a new uh, Supreme Court nominee on Friday or Saturday? Well, you would think there would be at least a decent interval here to honor Ruth Bader Ginsburg before the uh, political process begins uh, uh, in total, uh, but apparently not. They are bound and determined, hell-bent, on announcing this nominee and clearing them as quickly as, quickly as possible. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, your reaction overall to your colleagues, uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, South Carolina, Steve Daines out of Montana? Uh, guys that are in very close senatorial races this year, uh, promising their constituents in Montana and South Carolina uh, that they would never uh, support the nomination of a Supreme Court justice in a presidential election year, uh, and then both of them lying to their voters and doing just that with statements that they made after the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I'm saddened for my Republican colleagues. They have been cowered by President Trump. What he has said, he's even ridiculed the heroes in their own ranks, like John McCain. And now to have Mitch McConnell basically humiliate his own caucus. He, be he begged them four years ago to say something that uh, they would stand by him uh, regardless, that they would not give Obama an opportunity to fill this vacancy and to argue that it was the right, proper, and logical thing to do. Four years later, he completely reverses his position, and they all march silently behind him. It's a sad day in the Senate, and unfortunately, it also just is going to add to the division in our country. Senator, after uh, what Mitch McConnell and the Republicans did to Merrick Garland in 2016, there were uh, many people that suggested that there's nothing sacrosanct about nine members of the Supreme Court. That number has, as you know, uh, throughout history, uh, moved, uh, expanded at times. Uh, it has nothing to do with the United States Constitution uh, having a requirement set for nine. Of course, FDR tried to pack the court, uh, and it was one of his biggest political failures. I'm just curious, though, if, if, this, uh, if Republicans go through with this, uh, with the backdrop of Merrick Garland and now uh, them doing this, is this something Democrats would consider doing in 2021? Uh, ex uh, I know some have said no, but is this something that you would look at, the possibility of expanding the number of members on the Supreme Court? Joe, I know you want to draw me into that speculation, but I'm, I'm not no, going to that no, place. No, I don't, no I, I, I don't want to draw you into any speculation at all. I'm curious as an American and somebody who loves the Supreme Court and believes very much that the legitimacy of the Supreme Court is about as, as important as anything in Washington, D.C. So, no, I don't want to draw you into anything. I'm curious what you think about that. Well, it, it is not just a question of legitimacy, though, though that is the bottom line. The first thing we need to do is to convince America of the relevancy of the Supreme Court, that literally their decision on the Affordable Care Act in the midst of a pandemic would mean that millions of Americans could possibly lose, lose their health insurance protection. People then think, well, this isn't just an argument among the big shots in Washington. This really could affect my family. We are not at that point yet. And I think we want to make it clear to the American people the importance of the Supreme Court in their daily lives. Then the question of its future, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go to the place of making a determination. Uh, I think that's far in, in, in the future. We want to deal with the current vacancy on the court and the importance of that vacancy uh, when it comes to the lives of ordinary Americans. It was so moving to hear what conservatives and liberals alike uh, on the court uh, said about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and their uh, remembrances. Uh, of course, uh, 
Uh, Eugene Scalia wrote a very moving piece this past weekend for The Washington Post about the special relationship between Ruth Bader Ginsburg and his father, Antonin Scalia. Um, I, I'm wondering what your thoughts are about the life and the legacy of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And is there a personal moment for you that stands out about Joy. what a remarkable woman she is? Joe, I, I, I can just tell you that I, I have been struck by how, how personally moving this was uh, for so many people. I've been here in Chicago, uh, headed back to Washington today, where I'll see uh, the demonstration at the Supreme Court firsthand. Uh, but I've spoken to women in my family who, who speak of her in terms that uh, uh, j just show what an impact she's had on the lives of so many people. Uh, I, I had my opportunity to meet and talk with her. She was such a kind and, in many ways, humble person on a personal basis. But what extraordinary courage. This valiant lady stood up against the odds her entire life, speaking up for women and for those who are often forgotten uh, by uh, this society. Uh, and I think it's, it's an incredible legacy. And to think that she passed within days of John Lewis, uh, a civil rights icon, mm. you know, it, it, it reminds us of the people in our midst who have sacrificed so much to bring us to where we are today and how it is all at stake now as we move forward with this election and with this uh, process to fill the Supreme Court vacancy. It really does. Yeah, Senator Dick Durbin, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for your, your, your thoughts on Ruth Bader Ginsburg's passing and go Cubs. <laughs> there is that. <laughs> Go White Sox, too. All right. <laughs> Go White Sox, too. How mm -hmm. exciting is that? All right. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.